of seeking knowledge itself and how it is important, why it is important and how it can actually benefit us. And one of the reasons why we've actually put together this reminder is because we want to start something in this city, uh, inshallah, in this masjid, which will inshallah ta'ala continue for weeks, months and years to come. So, I think especially for this community, we are at the stage now where the Muslims, the youngsters, the elders, the numbers are growing uh, greatly, exponentially. The last time there was a number, a figure that was given, I think they were talking about over 15,000 Muslims in Hull and in the surrounding areas. As we know, we have six masajid which are established. We have other places where Jum'ah Qutbah is taking place for Salat al-Eid. There are other places that are praying Salat al-Eid. There are madaris and maktabs and classes for children which are taking place in the city. There is talks of uh, having an actual Dar al-Ulum or, or a place of education or an Islamic school. There are conversations happening in the background. And what this means is that it is something which we must take seriously and it's something that we must really put extra effort into. And we must start by educating ourselves um, we know that Talabul Ilmi Faridatun ala kulli Muslimin wa Muslimah. It is the acquisition of knowledge is compulsory for every male and every female. It is, it is something which we must encourage, it's something which we must push ourselves to do, and also we must push on to our youngsters, the next generation, those who are going to be passing on the mantelpiece, going to be passing on the torch of Islam for future generations. And if we don't start from home, then we really can't expect to get anywhere. We can't really expect to be successful. And when we talk about knowledge and ilm, it's something which is a vast ocean. It's something which we must understand with regards to the importance of it. It's not necessarily only the education that we get in our schools and in our colleges, although that is extremely important. There are people here who specifically come to this city, to this country, to be educated, to gain knowledge, to go to universities and to better their own lives and the lives of those around them. But understanding the basics of our faith at least is a minimum requirement. Making sure that we understand what our duty is. I'm going to ask a question and I'm it's only going to be interactive for those who are right in front of me. But if I was to ask the question, and I would prefer if some of the younger ones answered it, but anybody is welcome. If we know what the first, you're not young, you're getting old now. The, uh, the first verses that were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can anyone tell me? Especially the younger ones. Imran, yes, the younger ones. Abraham, are you going to say something different? Uh, okay, do you know them? Put you on the spot, but well done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Iqara, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. Iqara, to recite, to read, to not just to read and to recite, but to really um, take in that information as well. We can say read, but what we mean by reading here is to read, to recite, to understand, to take in that information, and then to be able to act upon that information that we get. And we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the faculty, the ability to be able to hear, listen, to be able to read, to be able to write for most of us, and to be, un to be able to understand. And this is the key thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Although we are all different abilities, some you could say are more intellectual than others, some you could say are more in tune with their educational side, if you like. But ultimately, we have the ability to take in, to absorb information. When we speak about young people, younger generation, as, you are, as if we feel young, then inshallah we are part of that bracket. 
But the younger we are, when we are given information, we are like a sponge and we take that information in. It's like when you're trying to memorize whether it's the Quran or something else. When we are younger, it seems to be a little bit easier. And as we get older, it seems to be, not always, not for everyone, but it usually is the case that it becomes a little bit harder. So we should start while we are young. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentions, is thani khamsan qabla khams. And one of them is, shababika qabla haramika, your youth. When you are young, take advantage of it before we reach the old age. Now I spoke to a person not too long ago who was saying, it's too late for me. I'm past the age of education, I can't learn anything. But I want my child to learn. I'm going to send my child to the masjid. I'm going to make sure they read the Quran. I'm going to make sure they pray the Salah on time. I'm going to make sure they do this, 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 and this. So I asked the father, I said, what about you? He said, I'm gone. Uh, khalas. Uh, it's too late for me. And it was a it was a very strange way of thinking. And I think without saying it in those words, I probably think most of us think the same. It's too late for me. I'll push my children to, to be educated. It's too late for me, I'll push my children to pray on time, but I, I can't, it's too late. It's never too late, my dear brothers and sisters, while we are alive and while we are breathing, we have that opportunity. And the fact that we are sitting here today in this very blessed in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is something which we must uh, take seriously. And we must say that it is not too late, because we are here. There are some people who have uh, lesser ability, let's say those who are dyslexic, or those who are going through any difficulties with regards to learning, slow learners, etc. It still doesn't mean that it's too late. It doesn't mean that we put a block on it ourselves. A few important things that I would recommend, I would uh, advise, and I can see a few people uh, have already come prepared. When there is a lecture, when there is a speaker coming to speak about something, Unless you have photographic memory, unless you have memory which is like you can record and you can keep it in there forever, it would be a good idea to have something to make notes with, pen and paper. Nowadays we have our mobile phones and a lot of them come with pens and you can even audio record and you can even make notes as you're going along. Now usually I don't encourage taking your phone out when somebody's speaking. But ultimately if you're using it to make notes and not playing games and watching videos and whatever else, then it's encouraged because it's something which we use nowadays. So when I see students coming to a lecture with something to read and write with, it's a good thing. Alhamdulillah, I grant his goodness with that. The, the word qalam is mentioned in the Quran, of course we know. The pen itself. So we should also understand what this comes with. Bring a pen with you, basically. Long story short. But alama bil qalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught by the pen and he's taught man that which he knew not so another thing about uh, taking knowledge is to be humble to say actually I don't know everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is an alim he is the one who has all knowledge of all things we still have room to grow and we still have room to learn and to take in information so again, when you are seeking knowledge, to be humble about it, to say, I can still learn, I still have space and room and ability to, to learn and to benefit. Even if it's a little bit slower than it was when we were younger, we should still be able to uh, benefit from it. The perfect example is that of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who we know was the English terminology to find the right word is difficult. But to say unlettered, I would say, is, uh, is a good way of describing how he was with regards to his reading and writing. He was not given that opportunity, you could say. He was not able to read or to write from a young age like most of us here today. And even that is a blessing in itself. I usually highlight this to the children. I say that the fact that you can read, the fact that you can write and you go to schools and you are learning and so on and so forth, it's a big blessing, it's a ni'mah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, unable to do that, but he was still given that prestigious position in which the Qur'an was imprinted onto his heart. And when he was told to read, Iqra, and he was replied by saying, Ma ana I am unable to read. And he was again almost shaken into him. Again, and he was repeated more than once, twice, three times. 
then the verses were revealed and they were imprinted onto his heart. So similarly, with regards to our souls and knowledge, when we hear that knowledge, when we hear that information, we must understand that it's something we, must, we should try to listen, not just with our ears. Try to listen with our hearts. I'm going to say that again because it doesn't make sense. Don't listen only with your ears. Listen with your hearts. Meaning, when you are in a position to take in information, don't just be sitting there, your mind is elsewhere, the information will go through here, it will most definitely, most likely come out of the other side. If that happens, it means there's nothing inside, because it's hollow. If it goes in here, it goes out. Make sure you are present in your mind and with your heart. When information goes into your heart, it usually it stays there, it rests there. And if our hearts are diseased, if our hearts are not clean, then we must try our best to try and clean them, purify them as much as possible. And then one way to do that is to take in that information. Of course, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while we're waiting, even while we were waiting here for the speaker to come and I was running around trying to set things up, there are a few brothers who picked up the Qur'an and they were reciting the Qur'an. This is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a way to purify. Instead of wasting the time that we have, benefit from it and use the time that we have. And this is a lesson that we take from life. When we are on our way to somewhere, when we are going back from somewhere, let's say we are waiting for something to happen, like today. We were supposed to start straight after Salah, I just received a message saying that the traffic is horrendous, very bad, and it's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, they're, they're still on their way, basically. While we are waiting, instead of just wondering and, and thinking about nonsense or nothing, benefit from that time, make use of it. And I saw some of the youngsters playing on their phones. Now, there's good and there's bad in that. You could either take benefit from those few moments, or we can uh, not take benefit and we'll actually take the opposite. <coughs> One of our duties on this earth is to spread the message of Islam. We are created as Khalifa fil Ab, as Adam is known to have been. Adam alayhi salam was given knowledge of all things. Adam alayhi salam was given knowledge of all things. We are children of Adam. We don't have that knowledge, but we have the ability to take on that information. We are representatives on earth. So when we gain information, and even today, if we learn something, it is going to benefit us, inshallah, but if we then pass on that information to somebody else, then we are fulfilling the instruction of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he said, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ Spread the message. Share the word. Spread the word from me to somebody else, even if it is one ayah, one verse, one point, one thing, one piece of information. So before we begin today's talk, I want your mind to be in the right place. I want your hearts to be in the right place. That I am here to benefit. I am here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am here so that I can change, I can learn, I can really take something away. So sometimes when, when a speaker speaks for a long time, we maybe remember the first part and we maybe remember the last part. But the middle part sometimes becomes a little bit blurry. So I would encourage you to try and make in your mind, in your heart, on your pen, uh, on your phones, in your notebooks, a few points, maybe five. I would say start with five. Try to remember these five points. If there's a lot more information, the more that you can take in, of course, take more, but try to remember at least five points. Really key, important points that you can then take on and you can repeat. Even the Prophet ﷺ used to repeat the Quran every year in Jibreel Islam, all the time, repeating, so that it would stay in the system. And when somebody tells me something, whether it's information, whether it's a story, when, especially when you hear a story, and you probably heard the elders, when they hear a story and they tell it again, it changes a little bit, they add a little bit of spice masala inside. But with information, try to keep it the same. Try to keep it in its original form. When a hadith comes to you, when an when explanation of an ayah comes to you, try not to add spices to it. Keep it in its original form, and in that way we'll, we'll keep it protected. 
So when information we attain today, try to make sure that we pass that on to other people. And the way to do that is to make sure, number one, we remember it. Number two, we act upon it. And number three, we say it. We actually say it out loud. For those who memorize the Quran, it's encouraged that when we read, we read out loud. We read out loud so that we can hear what we are saying. And when you say it to somebody else, and then you say it to somebody else, and you say it to somebody else, it becomes part of your system. It's the same with anything. Surah Al-Fatiha, everybody in this room, apart from the little one who's just coming, probably every single person in this room knows Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? It's because we repeat it every single day. Does anybody know how many times, another question for you, how many times do we recite Surah Al-Fatiha minimum, minimum every single day? 17 times. MashaAllah. Is that correct? No. Oh, Raja said no. 17 times. How did you work out 17 times? Uh, I had Mufti Ming say it all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. You heard somebody say it, the Sheikh say it, yeah. and you had retained, and now you've said that information. Yeah. But he didn't change it. He didn't change it. Did you check it or did you verify it? I, I counted it and it worked out to about that. That's, that's only the fault if you, if you count. Oh, count brilliant. Before. So yeah. the minimum, right, sorry. The minimum is obviously faraid, your fard prayers. And in every rak'at we read, so you say, Alhamdulillah, salam, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Your prayer is not valid if you don't recite to the Fatiha. So we say it a minimum of 17 times. If you include Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Asha, and every rak'ah in those prayers, then it's 17 times every single day. Now, if you're repeating something 17, 17 times a day, every single day from the time that you begin your salat proper till the end of your life, there's no way that you're going to forget it unless. Allah protect all of us, we have some issues with our memory and so on. Repetition, repeat. Remember and remind other people. Tadakir in the dhikra. So remind other people because it will benefit the believers. Remind yourself and remind other people because it will benefit one another. Again, it's extremely important. The Prophet was sent down as he was sent down as a teacher as well, a muallim, as a teacher. And it's through his teaching and his trainings that within, let's say, a hundred years, the whole of the world changed. It wasn't just Mecca, Medina. It wasn't just the Arabian Peninsula. It is the whole world. Now, wherever you go, when you say the word Muhammad, people know that. No, a Muhammad is the most common and well-known name in the world. Because he is the praised one. And now he's praised. I'm going to end my short reminder there, inshallah, ta'ala, because I've received a message that they are outside. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us wisdom. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us patience. And alhamdulillah, you've given us a lot of your patience today. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for istiqamah, which is steadfastness. That when we are. When we reach the uh, stage, we need to continue to uh, benefit, inshallah. The Sheikh entered and then the Sheikh left. But inshallah ta'ala, we'll um, be ready for our uh, official program to start. We will start with recitation of the Quran by our very own Sheikh Sahib, who's with us for another two weeks or so. Uh, inshallah, and then we'll begin with the lecture. Again, I ask you uh, to really be ready, be prepared. The Shaykh who is with us is of a high caliber. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him knowledge which is beneficial to all of us. And we are very fortunate by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is with us today. So really take it. Right? Barakallahu feek. So while we are here, again, the Shaykh reminded me very uh, kindly that renew your intentions. Make your intention that you are here for the sake of any majlis and dhikr. So we are in the majlis, we are in the gathering of knowledge. So make that your intention and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep your, your intention purified. Make your intention sincere with ikhlas and niyyah. And uh, through that there will be some benefit as well. So again, refresh, press the restart button, um, be present genuinely, not just for the sake of being here. That's why I usually ask people, not just today, but in khutbah and so on, 
try not to lean on the wall, unless you need to, of course, because it shows that you're serious. It shows you, it shows the speaker, engage with the speaker, look at the speaker when they're speaking, um, unless you're making notes. One of the, I remember one of the students in knowledge was saying, I don't even know what my teacher looks like properly, because I'm always down with my head down making notes. And the teacher would say, I don't know what they look like either. I only know the top of their head. So in that way, it's also a good thing. But really be present, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and through that we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies and cleanses our intentions for being here. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to really benefit from the knowledge that we are about to do. Subhanallah. We'll take a short breather. Um, I'll see if we can get some water in because it is fairly warm, but I don't know if we have enough uh, in the bottle, but we'll find out. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منا كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون ولا تكونوا كالذين تفرقوا واختلفوا من بعد ما جاءهم البينات وأولئك لهم عذاب عظيم يوم تبيض وجوه وتسود وجوه 
ثم الذين اسودت وجوههم اكفرتم بعد ايمانكم اكفرتم بعد ايمانكم فذوقوا العذاب بما كنتم تكفرون واما الذين بيضت وجوههم ففي رحمة الله هم فيها خالدون تلك آيات الله نتلوها عليك بالحق وما الله يريد ظلما للعالمين